Hi, I'm Gil Hutchins. Welcome to my walkthrough of my Advanced Android Project 2 Popular Movie Stage 1 app. I want to first tell you about my background to let you know what motivated me to pursue this scholarship. I'm 62 years old. I got my Bachelor of Science degree in Electrical Engineering in 1978. And yes, that's when back when the dinosaurs were on the earth. In my previous professional life, I was a hardware designer working on increasingly complex print circuit board designs. Late last year, circumstances helped me to decide that it was time for a career change. I had tried doing software de development uh, back in the late 70s, but those early desktop computers were primitive compared to today's standards. So now I'm ready to go in that direction again. I'm telling you all this to let you know that it's never too late to start a new career. You know, this scholarship reminds me of the summer courses I took in college. Uh, as was the case then, we're learning a large amount of information very quickly, and it's challenging, no doubt about it. On the other hand, we have some great resources available, including our fellow students. So if you haven't already, I encourage you to reach out on Slack to your fellow students and to the experts at Udacity and Google. You'll find people ready and willing to help. You know, no one of us has all the answers, but together we'll find the answers. That's true in life as well as in software development. So let's get started. First, I'll discuss the general guidelines that are relevant for this project and then the project specific requirements or the rubric, then the implementation guide for this project. And then I'll show you a few screen captures from my app, from my phone, and then, or actually from an emulator. Sorry about that. And then we'll go through the movie database API documentation. And then I'll go into Android Studio and show you my source code. And finally, I'll go through my project review because I want to show you uh, both the suggestions that the reviewer had for me of, of things I, I could do more easily and more quickly and better, as well as the affirmations of uh, things that were done well. Another good source of information that's not on this slide uh, that I've done a lot is to do a Google search with just the word Android space and then whatever topic you're looking for. Normally, you'll get a combination of posts on Stack Overflow and other forums. You'll also get the relevant portions of the Google Android developer documentation. I have found this to be a really good quick way of reviewing what I'd learned in the videos and the quizzes. So now let's go to the project guidelines. Okay, bear with me a moment. I'm gonna try this again. Oh, technology is not cooperating with me. One more time. There. Okay, this is the general guidelines uh, published by uh, Udacity for all project apps. The, uh, there's a link to more details if, if you want to read it. The first part of this is visual design and user interaction. Uh, standard design, the app does not redefine the expected function of a system icon such as the back button. And as long as you don't put code in that customizes the way that works, then you'll be fine. Also, the app does not redefine or... Okay. I'm getting messages that you can't see my screen. So... Let's try this again. Oh no, that did.
Okay. Okay, everybody, is that better? Okay. Now, I clicked the wrong thing. Okay. Okay, so here's what I talked about so far. Under navigation, the app supports the standard system back button. Navigation does not use any custom prompts. You may have seen some apps uh, that, for instance, ask you to touch the back button twice to exit. Uh, we're not going to do that. And then dialogue's dismissible. Pressing the home button goes back to the home screen. And again, we don't redefine any, any standard Android UI. We don't request permissions to, to access sensitive data or services that cost the user money. And you don't have to for this app. I haven't had to yet in any of the apps I've done. So a user app state that correctly preserves and restores the, uh, the app state. Now there's going to be, I'll say more about this later, but basically you want to, whenever you rotate the phone, you want to get the same activity. You want to preserve text input, preserve as much as you can. Okay, so that's the general requirements. Now let's go to the specific ones for this project. Okay. All right. First of all, the app has to be written solely in Java. There is a new language out called uh, Kotlin, but that's not part of this course. Uh, the opening screen is going to have a list of uh, or grid of movie posters, and you're going to use some kind of UI user interface element to set uh, the movies to either most popular or highest rated. And if you t click on a poster, you'll get a screen for the details. The details will include title, release date, the poster again, the app, the vote average, which is a number from one to ten, and and the plot synopsis or the summary overview. We have to use stable release versions of Android Studio and all of its components. There is a newer Android Studio out, but it's, I believe it's still considered to be in beta or it's not fully stable release yet. So I think we need to be using 3.1 point uh, whatever, not 3.2. When a user changes the sort criteria, the main view needs to get updated. And as I mentioned, if you select a poster, it goes into the detail screen. Under network implementation in a background thread, and that's important. We'll want more into that later. You're either going to query by popular or top rated, and we'll talk about the API later. And then this refers back to the general guidelines that I just showed you. Now I want to go through, show you a few screen captures from my app. Get the laser pointer going. There we go. Okay, this is the main screen. I had two goals in doing this project. One first goal was to meet the requirements in the rubric and also to keep the visual design clean and simple. And if you haven't already seen it, uh, this is summed up really nicely by a post that was on Slack by our fellow student, Becky S. Chapin, and this is quoted on the scholarship homepage. Rubric first, pretty later, ask for help. Because so, if you don't meet all the requirements in the rubric, then it really won't matter how visually appealing your design is. Although both of these are, are important in doing a successful app. And I mentioned it before, but let me mention again the third part of her post, ask for help. If you're stuck, please don't hesitate to ask for help. I always have always thought that successful people know what their limitations are and when to get help. So this was the main screen. Now here's the same screen in landscape mode. Now you'll notice on the in portrait orientation, I only had two columns. Here I have four columns. The reason for doing this was to keep the posters reasonable size in either orientation. I chose to 
implement the sort order options, most popular and highest rated, as menu actions. Uh, the rubric mentioned there's at least one other way of doing this. I chose this approach to keep this element off the screen when it's not being interacted with by the user. But again, it's not the only way you can do that. Now here's the detail screen that you get when, in this case, if you had touched uh, Thor Ragnarok. So you get the poster again, the release date, which I'm only gonna show the year, because that's what they showed uh, on the uh, screen mockups that we'll get to later. And then here's the rating, seven and a half out of 10. And here is the, uh, uh, synopsis or overview. And here's the same screen in landscape mode. Now I made this different from the portrait orientation to better use the screen space. If you're on the portrait orientation, the text was all below the poster. Here it's to the right of it, because if I put it below it here, you would have had this huge white space and you would, you would have had to scroll to uh, see the rest of it. So there's the screenshots now. We're going to go to the, the API documentation. OK. You know what? I skipped the implement. I think I skipped. Yeah, we went through the implementation guide. So here's the API. Or actually, I may have skipped the implementation guide. I'm going to look at it very quickly. And this is linked to from the from your your project. It reiterates what the app has to do. It talks about Picasso. And that's one image library you can use. Uh, or I used it in my app. You can also use Glide. This shows you, we'll talk more about this as well. It shows you how you have to set things up, set your uh, build.radle file up to use it. And you can literally, in one statement like this, you can uh, download an image. It also takes care of loading it, decompressing, caching, all that behind the scenes stuff. Now this goes into uh, how to fetch a poster because there's different resolutions available. And you can read through this uh, at, when you have more time. But this is an example of how to do that. And API, this talks about how to, you have to sign up for an account with Movie Database, get your API key. It talks about how to do that. Because if you don't have a key, you can't use the API. This is very important if you upload your code to a public GitHub repository, it is illegal to include the API key in your source code where it can be read. There is a way to hide it in your project where it's not visible in GitHub. And there is a, a post that, ends, that talks about how to do that. And you have to make sure that you don't crash when there's no network connection. This is a good post on how to do that. Uh, they make it very clear if your app crashes, if it can't get to the network, you won't pass. Here's some other resources. I'll go into parsables later, but that's good, to, very good to look at. And it refers back to the rubric. Now we're gonna skip through stage two. Now here's the screen box, and this is, I try to make my app look like these as much as possible. Now on this screen, the detail, some of these details are gonna get added in stage two. You don't have to do them for stage one. So, okay. Now we're gonna go back to the API. Okay. And first part of this just talks about how to set up the account. I want to go to the queries. There's two queries you're going to use. I get down the details. Here we go. Okay, you're going to use the popular and the top rated. Let's go to popular, and the other one's going to be just like it in terms of the document format. This gives the definition. You have to have your API key. It is required 
these other arguments in the query string are optional. And this is a the response you're going to get. The, the data items we care about are poster path, release date, overview, that's the plot summary, the title, the vote average, that's the one out of ten, or one through ten, and then popularity. Oh, I'm sorry, not popularity, vote average. And then, oh, and a nice feature of this is the uh, try it out. You can actually uh, you can actually put in, create a query, just like you'd use in your app. You can send a re you can send it, and then here's the response you're going to get from their server. Uh, this is in pretty print form. If you want to see the hierarchy, you can go to JSON Explorer because this is JSON data. Everything's going to come in as JSON, or then just the raw data itself. Now we're getting an error message because I didn't put in a valid key. If I put in a real key, you would have gotten a real set of data. Okay, so let's go back to this. Now we're going to go into Android Studio and get to the good stuff. Okay. Now the uh, order, I'm going to go through this in basically the same order that I wrote it in. I've had some questions about, you know, how do you get started, what do you work on first? and all of that. The first thing I did was to create my layouts under in the res folder. But here's now here is one item I put in draw. This is this is a free image that I downloaded. You can get them from Pixabay. Uh, there's one or two other sites where you get you know royalty free. Uh, there's no copyright issues. You're free to use it at least for educational purposes like this. So this is a default placeholder that I show because there are a few of those movies, one or two of them that uh, may not have uh, posters. So this is what I show if there's not a poster available. Under layout, first we have the, the main activity layout. Come on, double click, there we go. My poor old slow computer it takes a minute. Oh, there, finally. Okay, come on. Okay, I've got three elements here. I have an error miss. Well, first, I have a loading indicator. What I do is I make this visible, and I make these other two invisible uh, while I'm doing the, the request to the server to download the JSON. So this is what, this is the only element the user sees. And, of course, this is actually animated so that you have the circle going around on the phone. Now, if the download finishes with if it doesn't finish or it has an error, then I'll, I'll make the loading indicator invisible and show the error message. You know, movie data, not, movie data not available. If it finished successfully, I will show the grid of posters. And I did it as a recycler view because that is the newest and latest and greatest type of a, of a way of handling selectable lists. They encourage that over the, the old uh, grid view and the other, other kinds of views. Okay, so that's our main activity now. And then recycler view, since these are posters and not just text, I had to define, do a, do a layout for these each item in the recycler view. So this is my movie, this is my poster item. All it is is just a image view to show the poster. It defaults to that default image or Picasso loads it with the poster. And, uh, and then if you click on the poster, you get to the detail activity. 
so here's my now as you saw I have a different layout for landscape and portrait so here's the poster and I did a, a linear layout because the release date is different font size than the uh, vote average the 1 to 10 and I wanted to control where they were and this is how I did it get the formatting the overview is done as a scroll view because it could be more text than can fit on the screen so uh, that's why I made it a scroll view and then the deep the portrait mode is the same except the, the overview is under the poster now I did something here that we'll see why in the code I created some uh, integers I have a variable called span count if you're in landscape mode it's four if you're in portrait mode it's two that that's what tells it how many columns of posters to show okay So that's pretty much, that's the resources. And then uh, there's a couple of few things in the build.gradle. We may come back to that. Now, when I wrote the code, so I did all that first. When I wrote the code, first thing I did was to create a uh, class to hold the movie data. So each instance of this class is a movie. And I made it parcelable. So the public class movie implements parcelable. So it has a title, release date, poster path, vote average, and overview. I pretty much kept the same names that the API used for each one of these. This is my constructor. Now, I don't have methods. I don't have individual setter methods in here to set each of these. The reason is that once I create the movie, I don't go in and make changes to the individual data items. Therefore, in my constructor, I have arguments for all the data items, and so I set them there. This is a private constructor that's required by the parcelable interface. And the reason I'm doing parcelable, parcelable is to allow me to easily uh, send this data to a different, from the main activity to the detail activity. Okay, so here's this private constructor, uses a parcel. The read string method pulls the data out of this parcel and puts it into my fields. I do have getter methods where I can get each data item separately because I need to be able to do that elsewhere. This method has to be overridden. It's part of the parcelable interface. And almost always, this is going to be a zero. There's some special case where it's a one, but not in this app. Here's another method in the parsable interface has to be overridden. This is when you're, you're putting the data into the parcel. Up here is when you're pulling it out. So you do a write string, because this is all string data. So here you do a write string to put each of these into the parcel. And this is required, this public static final uh, creator. It has to be creator, it has to be all caps. Parsable interface looks for that. And these, these two methods are required. This, this, this is where this private constructor gets used, this create from parcel, return new. Then this uses that private constructor. This is uh, if it has to deal with the array of movies. It already knows what the size needs to be, so it just returns a new array of movies. So that's the movie class. Now let's go to our main activity. I'm going to close some of these just to get rid of some of the clutter. Let's get down to our main activity. There we are. Okay, so sort by, that's either popular or highest rated. We need a movie adapter, to, and we'll go through that. I have a class for that. We have our poster grid, recycler view. We have the error message text view, loading indicator, progress bar. These are some predefined strings. And there's a reason why I did this. 
we'll get into that later. So the on create method, standard super on create. We set our content view. We now there's libraries such as Butterknife that they recommend, but I was you know I did what I was taught. I just used find view by ID. So we get our movie grid. Here's that here's that variable that I defined over here in integers, the span count. So we do a get integer from there, and we set this variable. Now we have a grid layout manager. We create one, or we, we get an instance of one, new grid layout manager. And all you give it is this is the context. So you say this, and then give it this uh, span count, which is actually the number of columns. So it's either two or four. So now we, we set that layout manager onto our recycler view. We set the adapter, or we, we get a new instance of, uh, and I created a custom adapter, movie adapter, get a new instance of that, and we set that onto the recycler view. And then here's my find view by IDs for my error message and loading indicator. I default sort by to popular. And then I have a, my own method called fetch movies. That's where I actually grab the JSON data and put it into, uh, into my a set of movie classes. Here's now. Here's some uh, Git methods. One thing I do, and I need to address this. I had a question about using async task loader. I I also had a lot of trouble with that, and I actually ended up deciding not to use it. And my reasoning was the only loader I was really familiar with at the time was cursor loader. And that really assumes that you're using a content provider uh, and also SQ, SQLite database. Well, for stage one of this app, we, were, we weren't required to store, store the data you know, locally on the phone. Uh, and so I did not use SQL, and therefore I did not use a content provider, and so I didn't want to use cursor loader. And since I had a lot of trouble with async task loader, I ended up pretty much doing this a whole different way. Now, I, I passed review, but in hindsight, I think I would have used async task loader. So I'm sorry that I can't show you how I used async task loader because I didn't use it. But I'll show you what I did. I wouldn't recommend it necessarily, but maybe at least give you some ideas. I actually created my own custom interface I, I, I kept it. I could have embedded it in here, but I made it a separate, a separate file, and it defines. In fact, I'll open it up now. Here, it defines these methods. This is a mechanism for me, for it's a mechanism for this fetch movies task to interact with main activity. I know I'm kind of jumping around, but as one of you said, this is all kind of intertwined. So. It, um, I'll explain it the best way I can. Fetch movies task runs on a background thread. And there's issues when you try to refer to a, con a context of the main thread. If you try to refer to it from the background thread, you get into difficulties. So my way around that, and, and that's handled for you by async task loader, but my way around it was to create this interface. In put in these methods where I could access uh, the main activity from fetch movies. Like I can get the sort by, I can get the movie adapter, I can get these views, and I can start the detail activity. So I've got all these methods here to do that. So let's go back to main activity. So here's where I define these methods. These are just getter methods, you know, get sort by, return sort by. Now here's the start detail activity. I actually pass it. I pass it whatever movie was selected, whatever poster was uh, was selected on the main screen. But I actually pass it the movie class that can, or the instance of the movie class that contains all of that movie's data. I create an intent, give it this for context. Uh, it's for the detail activity, and then I do a put extra to give it the uh, movie movie data. Then I start the activity and this starts the detail activity. This is standard code that creates the menu where I put the 
the sort options. And here's where I respond to those. If I selected most popular, I set sort by to most popular, and then I fetch the movies. And if I selected highest rated, I set sort by to highest rated and fetch the movies. This is how I, I update the screen based on what you select, because as soon as you select something, I go call this fetch movies. Fetch movies, in turn, runs this async task that actually does the network download and parsing of the JSON data. We'll get to that. So here's my fetch movies routine. Notice I turn off the movie grid because we don't, don't know yet whether it was successful or not. Now, before I attempt the internet access, I use the connectivity manager to, to make sure that we're even connected. And this is how I keep this out from one way, I keep it from crashing if we don't have a connection. So if we do have a good connection, then info is going to be not null, and it's also going to have this status code. So I turn off the error message, I turn on the loading indicator, or yeah, I'll make it visible. And then I actually, this starts the async task, the fetch movies task. If I do not have a network connection, then I make the error message visible, and again, hide the loading indicator. Okay, so let's go to movie adapter. This is what interacts with the recycler view. Okay, so I'm extending recycler view dot adapter. I have, this is an array list of movies. I have my base URL to send to the movie database. I'm going to append something. I'll append, append the poster path to it, uh, a variable to hold the context, and then and then actually something to refer to my interface that I defined. So this is just the constructor, and I actually give the, I, I tell the constructor uh, where the main activity interface is, and I store it. This is the view holder that must be defined for a recycler view. I'm also implementing an on-click listener for when they touch the poster. Here's the view holder constructor. And I do a find view by ID to actually get the poster view. That's where the poster image is. I set the on-click listener by saying this. It sets it to this routine, this method here. This is And this is an uh, override. Don't do that of their on-click method. Now here's where I use that start detail activity that, I've, that I defined in the interface. So what I'll do is I'll go to my array of movies and this, this tells me which poster, it's just an integer that tells me the index of which poster was selected. And then I pass that to my start detail activity and, and as you saw that puts it, that does a put extra, puts it in the intent and passes it to the detail activity. Okay, on create, this is an override that's required. It updates the view holder. And see, here's that grid item that I defined in layout. Here's where it refers to it. Basically, you're taking this layout and you're inflating it. This is pretty much standard, you know, boilerplate code to, to inflate this view to get you your movie poster. This is another method that has to be overridden. This is when it has to update the content of this view holder. So if, if I was able to download, I do a movies, and I know what position I'm at, so I, get, I do a get poster path. If there is a poster path, I'm sorry, if there's not a poster path, then I just show my placeholder image, the bucket of popcorn. If there is a poster path, then I use Picasso, like, like it showed in the implementation guide. And all you do, you, Picasso dot width, give it this content, my context that I stored, dot load. Then I take, so I take my base URL and append the poster path, and then dot into tells it where to put the image, and that's the this holder that got created, dot poster view. And then there's another required method that has to be overridden, which is get item count. All that is, that is the size of my array list of movies that's defined up here. 
you know, there is a method I defined where I, if when, when I update the set of posters, I do a set movies until I update it. And then this tells the adapter that it needs to actually go update the display and give it a notify data set changed. Okay. Um, so let's go to fetch movies task. With any luck, I might actually get through this by 1045. All right, this is my, all I did here was I extended an async task and the uh, parameter that the task gets, you know, in, the, in my main activity, I had that execute statement. So I give it, I tell it where the main activity interface is so we can use those methods. This is if you want to show progress, if you want to report progress back to the main activity. In this case, I don't. And then this is the end result, which is an array list of movies. Here's my base URL. Now here's, here you can see that I actually embedded my API key into this, in this source file. And that is a, that is illegal if you're going to put this on a GitHub public repository. In my case, I just sent them a zip file, which kept it private, so I got away with it. In future, I, in, in, my, in my future apps, I did put some of them on GitHub, so then I had to start hiding this. So I can't tell you how to hide it this time, but I didn't do it. Okay, so that's the activity interface. This is a required method for an async task. It has to be overridden. This is what actually performs the task do in background. I pass it this parameter, tells it where the main activity interface routines are, methods. I initialize an array list. URL starts at null. Now there's a bunch of try catch blocks because you have to account for possible errors. So first I attempt to, I create the, I take the base URL and you might notice here this discover, um, that that's really a that wasn't the way I intended to do this. What happened was I really didn't pay attention to the implementation guide and I went out and figured out my own way of procuring movie data. <laughs> I should have just used the popular and highest rated queries. Instead, I used a discover query. If you do that, then you have to give it an argument for either popular or highest rated. Dot DESC. And that's why those strings were defined the way they were. So I didn't really do this right. But it worked. Again, it worked, so it passed the review, but I wouldn't recommend it. It'd be easier to do it the recommended way. Okay, so we build the, stop that. We build the URL, and if we didn't build it correctly, we get an exception. And, but I don't ever expect that to happen, so what really all this does is just put some information into the log cat, log messages. This never happens when you, when you run the app successfully. Okay, then we created a uh, URL, and I could have used a library here, and I should have. I should have used either Volley or Retrofit. But uh, at the time, I wasn't familiar with those. I had done this before in a previous app, so I just used this. This is kind of the brute force way of doing it. But I'll show you what I did. Create a connection. You have to create an input stream. You have to create a scanner. And tell this would be the end of data. Then if it has data, and then here's where I, and again, there's a library called JSON that does a lot of this JSON parsing for you. I, I parsed it myself. You grab the JSON object, you look for one called results, and then inside that you, you grab the uh, title, grab release date, poster path, vote average, overview. And then I add that, and here's where I use that constructor that I talked about in my movie class where I create a new instance of movie, give it this data, and add it to my array list of movies. Now, if there's any errors, if there's any errors in the JSON data, you get a JSON exception. Now, I actually do something with that. I actually clear my array list to make it empty since I couldn't, didn't get good data. And then this is just a general exception that, again, shouldn't happen in when you run the app, but it could happen during debug. And this finally means that this, no matter what happens up here, whether or not you have errors, uh, you, you run this code. And what this does is this disconnects, cleans up the uh, network connection. You want to do that before you, when you're done with it. 
before you close the app. And here's another general I.O. exception. And then after the task finishes running, this is another method that has to be overridden that's built in. You do it on post execute. This is where I, I update these views. I, uh, if I was able, if I was successfully, I'm sorry, if I was not able to load movies, then this will be empty. And I'll show the error message. If I was able to load movies, then I show the movies. So I uh, use my set movies method in the adapter, give it the set of movies, and make it visible. So what have we not covered yet? Covered movie adapter, movie interface, oh, detail activity. Okay. This, this is a, there it is. This is a very short class. This populates the detail screen. This activity gets started from main activity. So we have our super on create set content view. We get the intent. We pull and and we uh, we pull out the the movie data that was you know for the movie that was passed to this for main activity. We set the title. We set the well again if there is a poster. If there's not a poster, I should say a poster path is no. Then I just show my default bucket of popcorn. Otherwise, I uh, use Picasso to show the poster, just like I did in the main activity. Uh, set the now the release date. The way they format it is year slash month. All I want to show is the year. So if the and sometimes they only give you a year, sometimes they give you a year and a month. So if they give me more than four characters, I only use the first four characters. So that always gets me the year. So I set that. This average view, I want to show you what I did. There's a cool, oh, go to my strings. Because I'm sure you know by now that you're never supposed to hard code displayed strings in your code, you, you should, and that's because Android will automatically translate, it, it, it can automatically translate them into whatever language that you're using. So, this is a formatting string. This argument right here, this percent one dollar s, the dollar s says that this is going to be past a string, and then the character slash one zero. So, this is how I get, for instance, 7.5 slash 10. So, back to the code. Here, you'll notice that um, in this get, I'd use a get string, and I, re I refer back to that string I just showed you, and here's the argument. For instance, if this is 7.5, then this is going to end up being 7.5 slash 10. That's what I put in my rating. And then the overview, that's the plot overview, and that's where I put that in. Okay, so I think... I think I'm ready to answer whatever questions you may have. I'm sorry that I went a couple of minutes over. So feel free to put your questions in Slack. And Okay, here's the first one. It's better to make the URL connection a method inside the main activity or in the async task class. Definitely want to do that in async task because it can take up to several seconds or even more to to uh, obtain download data from a network server. If you do that inside your main activity, then your main activity is going to sit there and it's, it's on your main thread, user interface thread. It's going to sit there and wait on that and it's going to make the phone look like it's frozen. You know, it's going to be noticeable to the user. So anything that takes more than a few milliseconds or certainly more than a tenth of a second or could take that long, you want to do it in an async task or in an async task loader, which also runs on a background thread. So that background thread can go off and do the work and without your main thread having to wait on it. So I hope that answered that.
Ah, where did I get the popcorn image? Let's see. Lately, I've been using a site called Pixabay, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y. I may have actually gotten the popcorn from uh, Shutterstock, and I may have actually paid for it, but I didn't know about Pixabay at the time. Pixabay is a great site. They have lots of really high quality free photos that are unrestricted use, certainly, certainly for educational projects like this one. So Pixabay is my personal favorite. Okay, I'm going to check my list of pre-submitted questions and see if I'm hoping I covered everything. Oh, project review. Yikes. In fact, that ties in perfectly to the question I was going to cover next, which is, if I had to start over and redo this, what would I do differently? So let's look at the project review, and I will let you know. And I put it in the wrong screen. Bear with me just a moment. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is my actual review that I got. I can find out where my mouse is. There we go. Okay, I met all the requirements. Uh, Viewer had some nice things to say, but also had some uh, suggestions, which I definitely would want to implement on my next project. For one thing, I would have used async task loader. Uh, I would not have done it the way I did it because the way I did it is kind of, it works, but it's probably not optimum, kind of non-standard. But here's his first suggestion, uh, which I've already mentioned. He, he caught that right away, the fact that I included my API key. And he, this is actually a link. He gave me a link to uh, an example of, but there's a, you can find them if you go do a search. You can find examples of, of how to uh, hide your API key. Basically, you put it in the gradle.properties file, which is one of the, uh, I didn't show you that file, but you can hide it in there instead of putting it in your source code, and then you can pull it out of it when it builds the, the uh, project. And he mentioned what I did that I really could have used a library. He, he recommended Retrofit. I've actually used Volley in a later project, and it takes care of all this nuts and bolts, makes it a lot easier. Uh, even though he said did a good job parsing, JSON, he recommended JSON library. Haven't tried that yet, but it's I've heard it's a good one. And on main activity, here we go. He liked how he used Recycler View. It's yeah, it's a more advanced and flexible version of List View. And this this is brings up a good point. Later in this course, we're going to have to do a, a project using Material Design. And I think we're pretty much going to have to use Recycler View in order to do that. So, you know, the sooner you learn it, the better. And, and he mentioned I could automatically calculate the number of columns I need based on screen size instead of predefining the different values like I did and give an example, which would be a more efficient way of doing it. Uh, he liked me using a menu. He also mentioned I could have used a bottom navigation bar instead. Uh, haven't tried that yet. Uh, definitely liked con checking the connectivity status before making a request. That's important. Otherwise, for one thing, either even if the app doesn't crash, you can end up sitting there wasting a lot of time waiting for it to time out and finally tell you that it couldn't do it. Any mention I could have also used a broadcast receiver, but uh, using a library, again, using a library such as um, uh, well, you have to check the stat, the connectivity yourself, but but he just, using a library such as Retrofit or Volley can can help simplify this whole network access. He had a comment on my layout. Uh, oh, he liked using the scroll view. 
and again that's to keep it from falling off the bottom of the screen and then movie adapter Let's see this is oh yeah I could have done better error handling than what I easier than the way I did it and better I think I may not have, I may not have covered all the possible you know all the error cases in this app he mentions using placeholder and error methods I didn't try that and yeah use the parsable interface it is a very good way of in my case since I had a, a data object that had you know, multiple components parsable is the best way of doing that yeah, one more comment in my detail activity oh yeah and I, like I said I used find view by ID for everything there is a library called butter knife that will simplify that so he recommended that I use that but overall so, that's, so I would do some things differently I think every project I've done I was able to look back and come up with something that I could have done better, could have done differently, you know, based on what I've learned since then. You know, I haven't tried that with this one because I've been too busy working on my next ones. But uh, at any rate, okay. Let's see if I have more questions. We've got five more minutes. Please feel free to ask a question. Let's see. Got a few more minutes, guys. In the generic sense. Okay, everyone, I think we're going to finish up. So I appreciate all the questions and your attention, and I hope it helped. Thank you.